hey, I just want to be the boss. You know, I'll tell you a story. When I was a kid, I was two years old. I had a full out fight with my mom because I wanted to drive. And I stood there and on standing on the seat, holding onto the steering wheel of the car. And I pounded my chest and I said, me boss, when I was two years old. Now, I don't remember this, but my mom tells the story all the time. I'm very driven to be the person who not only leads the company, but takes the responsibility. You know, I want to be that guy because there's lots of people who can't handle that. And I want to, I want to impact people's lives. I want to make their life better. I love, I'm driven to help people avoid the entrepreneurial nightmare. This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today, to start turning your dreams into a reality. My curiosity question for you is, what is getting in your way from becoming the best entrepreneur you can be? Okay, let me set the tone. Entrepreneurship, it's freaking hard. There's no other way to put it. Today's young culture is filled with all the aspiring entrepreneurs looking to build the next billion dollar company and the big go big or go home mentality that's ingrained in all these entrepreneurs and young founders that we read about every single day is fabricated because the press and online, they only release the nice success stories, the the stories that everyone wants to read. And it is exciting. It's exciting the hell out of us. If these guys can't do it, why can't I? You might think to yourself. The truth is that the media, it rarely leaves out the guys who are struggling. While while keeping the flashy headline, of course. Why? Because people don't want to hear about your early startup struggles until you succeed. And it's in the interest of the media companies to capture your attention. Look, I have no interest in bringing you down right now. But... When you enter the boxing ring without understanding how to defend yourself, you're going to get knocked down. And with that said, I have Jamie Irvine, who has gotten knocked down but gotten himself up again. He has been in sales since 1997 and now manages over $2 million in annual sales. He's a master at coming into a business and not wasting time by using a profile first approach which makes it easier to identify if someone is ideal for a role in a company. He is also the host of Jamie Irvine Company. He is also the host of the podcast Jamie Irvine Podcast for anyone who is itching to gain some serious wisdom in business and in life. So without further ado, give a warm welcome to the one and only Jamie Irvine. Hello. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, Jamie. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing really well. Today's a good day. I got to be honest, not every day is as good as today, but uh, I'll take the wins when I can get them. 
Awesome. Oh, I love to hear it, Jamie. Um, so, uh, you know, really, let's uh, let's start from the beginning, kind of. Uh, you know, while you're in your uh, mom's womb, you know, let me let me hear the first thought that you had. <laughs> no, I'm just totally joking. Um, I, I can tell you my very first memory. Oh gosh, um, you have a first memory, huh? I have a first memory. I was three years old, and it was the first time on an airplane. We were flying from the East Coast to the West Coast, and I was super pissed because we were up above the clouds, and it didn't feel like we were moving. And I said to my mom, we're never going to get there. <laughs> That's awesome. That's the best answer ever. <laughs> oh, It just uh, goes to show you how small we really are for the first time when we fly, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, well, anyways, that was a that was a solid start. Um, I want to definitely start out again. Um, do like a, a second retrial to start out. So and just paint the the platform and say, you know, the mission of the show is really to make someone feel less alone and also to learn how someone can scratch their own itch, which means to me that they're they're solving some sort of problem they have with themselves. And they're also doing it for other people at the same time. So how did you get to where you got to today by scratching your own itch? Well, I I would love to say that way back in 97 when I got out of school and I started in my first career that I had a big master plan, had it all figured out, and uh, I executed over the last 20 plus years, and everything has just been awesome and uphill from there. That's not the way it went. I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do with my life when I got out of school. I started selling high-end suits to rich businessmen in Vancouver, kind of realized, hey, I got a knack for this sales thing, but uh, men's fashion wasn't it for me. So I transitioned into another industry that was so radically different. It was commercial vehicle parts, very blue collar. And uh, I spent like 12 years just working, figuring life out, trying so many different things. Uh, and got to be straight up honest with you, I royally screwed up my life by the time I was like 24. You know, by the time I turned 24, I had been married and divorced twice. I was a single dad. I'd gone bankrupt. I had a nasty drug addiction. I'd been homeless, living in a warehouse. And I hit rock bottom uh, and had a very interesting conversation with a family member who looked at me in disgust and said, You are pathetic. And that was like the moment when I said, I got to do something. I got to change something. This, this, this is not the life that I imagined when I was a kid. What am I doing? And so really at that point, I had one of those very classic aha moments. And I looked up into the sky and I said, all right, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to try to do something different. And I just kind of opened my heart to God and the universe and said, time to make some significant changes in my life wow so do you still talk to that person that told you that you're disgusting and that you, you you're basically worthless actually that family member passed away uh tragically she had uh, sudden adult death syndrome and, and she died in her early 30s she was a cousin of mine but um you know she gave me a gift in that moment. And I had spoken to her a couple times after that. There was no hard feelings in any way, but we did uh, go our own separate ways. And I'm sad to say that I didn't get to share the impact she had in my life because she passed away suddenly. When you say a gift, do you mean like because she made you feel like uh, garbage in that moment that, that you realized that you needed to change? Is that the gift? Yeah, the gift was that she had the internal fortitude to tell the truth it was the fact that it rang true when she said it like you know when someone puts you down and they're just like jealous or they're just being petty and you know in your heart you're like what i'm a good person what are you talking about then it doesn't affect you but when someone looks you in the eye and you know they love you and they say you're pathetic and it rings true in your heart and you know in that moment that they love you so much, they're willing to do what no one else will do, which is to tell you the truth. It has a profound impact on a person's life. Wow. So in a, in a wild sense, like that was one of your mentors. Do you have anybody else in your life right now that you look up to that's um, like keeping you on your toes? 
Well, I uh, I never met my biological father. He he ran out on me before I was born, and so I think growing up, uh, even in my um, early adulthood as a young man, I was always looking for a father. And I kind of developed a composite mentor in the form of several different men who stepped into my life at just the right time. Uh, my early mentor was a general manager of a company I worked for. He was fantastic, Alan Felling. Um, then I had a salesman who was a master at uh, aggressively going after business, but at the same time was a wonderful human being, and he mentored me in sales. In entrepreneurship, I met a man named Art Johnson who introduced me to Michael E. Gerber, uh, and Michael's work has been so influential on me. It really has shaped who I am as an entrepreneur in many ways. Brian Tracy, a Canadian, but also uh, someone who lives in America now and had a storied 40-year plus plus year career. He's still going strong. Um, you know, there were so many different men along the way that impacted me and, and stepped into my life at just the right time. I think it was partly because I was also searching and open to that mentorship. So uh, if I had been closed in my mind to it, it wouldn't have happened. But because I was open to it and I was always asking questions, people stepped in at the right time. And then something very interesting happened because I was still looking for that father figure to show up. And I had a stepfather and he's an awesome guy, but I don't think he was prepared to really be a stepfather at the time. And something amazing happened. I, when I turned 38, I'm 38 now, at the beginning of this year when I turned 38, I uh, I was still looking for that dad to show up, that that man, that that leader that I was looking to follow. And I looked in the mirror one morning and I saw him for the first time. And it was me. I had developed and turned into that leader, that man that I had always searched for. It finally happened. It took a long time. But I finally was able to look in the mirror and, and be satisfied that I no longer needed to search for a father I never knew, that I was the man and the leader that I'd always needed, and that I'm going to be that to somebody else. Hey, Logan Tyler Nelson here. I would so appreciate it if you took some time to hit the subscribe button. I really want to just honestly live and give. Why? Because I was told when I was young that if you're feeling down, the best way to feel better is by lifting someone up again. So in an effort to make someone feel less alone, please hit the subscribe button so the podcast has a better chance of being found and making someone feel less alone. And if you're feeling down, hey, it can help you. Know that by hitting that subscribe button, you just did someone a huge favor. So thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Else. What traits do you think you adopted in order to become a leader? Meaning like, um, you know, what, what traits are you willing to sacrifice to be a leader? Well, I think there's two sides to it. I think there's what you sacrifice, which is your own personal interests. Uh, you sacrifice yourself and you give to other people. And whether that's your own family, your friends, your community, the greater community in the in the sense of, of the global business community, whatever it is, you have to you have to sacrifice your own interests, your own desires. There's lots of things I want to go do, but I don't because I am responsible to and I feel responsible for a lot of people. Uh, on the other side of that, it's not just what you're giving up, but it's also what you have to become. You have to be able to be decisive and make decisions with um, out hesitation hesitation in the moment because sometimes there's these crossroad moments that come up and you've got to be able to make a decision. I think that you have to have drive and you have to really push yourself beyond maybe your own personal limits that you think you have. You have to be willing to go beyond that and uh, find out how far you can go. And I think that you have to have a level of humility to recognize that you are not the be all and end all you never will be. I just posted on Instagram a great picture of a little pug dog wrapped in a blanket that says, you're not Yoda. We all have strengths and weaknesses. And I think being self-aware and understanding how to leverage your strengths and how to insulate yourself from your weaknesses is extremely important in any leadership role. Wow, I, you know, I, that was beautifully answered. And I, I, you know, I interviewed a guy by the name of Bob Berg and he wrote the book, The Go-Giver. 
And um, he, he talks about that's the, the same qualities that you speak of. Um, and I just have to applaud you for that, being able to just kind of outline what traits are inside of a leader. And uh, because I know a lot of people that listen to this are looking to either uh, become that leader or they're currently in the role as a leader. And it is tough sometimes to feel like, uh, you know, when you're doing it to actually have a a sort of structure to it by getting it outside of your head to look at it and go, am I, am I doing these things? Um, so that was uh, beautifully said. Thank you for, for going into that. Hey, before you ask your next question, I just want to comment. You're the first person that has mentioned the go-giver before I do. So I knew I always liked you for a reason. You and I are, are, are on the same wavelength in a lot of ways. I think uh, the way that you think um, and the way that I think are very similar because honestly, I've never met someone who mentioned that book. So that's that's pretty awesome. Oh, geez. Yeah, The Go-Giver is um, probably more important to me than the freaking Bible. <laughs> and someone might listen to that. <laughs> someone might go, all right, uh, yeah, I'm really religious. I'm turning this show off. Um, no, but it, yeah, don't, don't stand too close to Logan. He yeah. might get struck by lightning. <laughs> uh, no, it is, I think a very great sub Bible to have though. Really? It does. It, it speaks to me in so many ways and it utilizes storytelling in a way that, um, really the, the metaphors in it have just been imprinted in my head. And, and I, I recommend that book to anybody who is not even in entrepreneurship but it's just looking to gamify, um, or I mean, I guess upgrade themselves in the game of what it is to be a a, a person who is just giving and is is down and depressed. Because I think it helped me with my. Uh, I've talked about you know depression on this show, and and I think it, it actually has helped me a lot with depression and overcoming my my negativity. Because whenever I feel so down and like. I want to work on my own stuff and I want to create my, and I want to make content for myself. And then I also make content for someone else and I start helping other people advertise themselves. I go, wow, that feels almost better than making content for myself. I should do more of this. If you like that book, have you ever read the 100 to zero principle by Al Ritter? I have not, but I think I will now. Oh dude, it's, you're going to love it, man. It's uh it's, it's, it's kind of in the similar vein, but it's all talking about relationships and giving and how to how to go about that. It's a short book, man. You'll be able to read it in like one day, but it it's awesome. Oh man, so, yeah. Tell me tell me what you think of it when you read that. I will absolutely. So uh, I'll plug that in the show notes actually for anyone who's looking to grab that book as well, and we can read it together. And uh, you know, uh, definitely, I'll have a. A conversation about it because I think it's really important to read these books and then converse. And I think um, this is where I want to go into um, a little bit about Jamie's podcast and how it's kind of impacted his life. Because I think podcasting is a great way to actually learn the information that you're trying to digest. So, like, who is a guest um, that you've had on your podcast that has really uh, allowed you to not only build some some amazing practices in your own life but build a, a practice that actually earns you some money because at the end of the day if we don't have wealth coming in then then uh you know we're kind of like just scraping for food hey logan tyler nelson here i would so appreciate it if you took some time to hit the subscribe button i really want to just honestly live and give why? Because I was told when I was young that if you're feeling down, the best way to feel better is by lifting someone up again. So in an effort to make someone feel less alone, please hit the subscribe button so the podcast has a better chance of being found and making someone feel less alone. And if you're feeling down, hey, it can help you. Know that by hitting that subscribe button, you just did someone a huge favor. So thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Yeah, and and I guess to answer that question, I got to kind of fill in the blank. So from that moment when I was 24 and I started to change my life, I really got serious about my career. 
um, and started to rebuild my personal life. And then I got serious about business. And in 2009, I became an entrepreneur. I started a, con a consulting business with a business partner, and that ultimately failed very quickly. And I learned a lot of lessons. You know, sometimes you learn more from falling down than from from winning. But um, I transitioned because I was in a bad spot after that. All my money was gone. I had 700 bucks left. I didn't know what to do. My wife and I started a contracting business with that $700. And six years later, we were able to sell that business uh, in a multi six figure deal. And it employed a great group of people. We learned how to build business. It was a traditional business, like I said, a contracting business, the farthest thing from the, from what I wanted to do. But uh, there was a demand and a need. And we learned how to build that business in such a way with systemization that we could operate a traditional business remotely. We actually moved a 1,000 kilometers away or 600 miles and we ran that business remotely and then when we sold it the people who bought it they bought it for the systems they actually contracted my wife to continue to run the business remotely so to this day she's still running that business which has 3 x in growth since the merger and we continue to operate that business remotely i'm involved as a consultant and uh I've helped them with that transition. So that brings us up to 2017. And it was kind of like, oh man, I, I did it. I, I was successful, but I'm young. I'm in my late thirties. I still got 40, 50 years of life ahead of me. What am I going to do next? And so I started building a personal brand and I started blogging and that led me to podcasting. I got to be a guest on several podcasts, including uh, world renowned podcasts like EO fire and others. And, um, I realized that, you know, coaching people and, teaching people the things I had learned and helping people to avoid the entrepreneurial nightmare and actually live the dream of starting a business that takes care of them financially and also provides flexibility and freedom in their life is, is really my mission. And so I started the Jamie Irvin podcast, and it's really focused on small business owners, service-based business owners. And I started bringing on a lot of guests uh, to, to try to unpack something that I have a core belief around, which is once you find a blueprint, which is a step-by-step -step process that has been proven to be successful, and then you identify and remove your barriers, you have an opportunity to fully express your greatness. And so I built my show around that concept. Each interview, we talk about that. We we talk about how to how to be successful, how to overcome barriers, how to celebrate and fully express your greatness. Then we do a little bit of reflection where we talk about, you know, what um, advice we have for our younger selves. And then I finish the, the interview with a teaching moment where each entrepreneur teaches something that they're passionate and experienced about, something that will impact the listener right there in the moment and that they can go do that day to improve their situation, like you said, to make a business that earns profit, that can operate independently of them eventually, that can scale, things like that. And so I've had some really amazing guests. Um, I know John Lee Dumas was fantastic. He he really laser focused our attention on the acronym FOCUS, which is follow one course until success. And I think that's something that creative types and uh, really driven people sometimes struggle. We struggle to focus because we've got so many great ideas. We want to do it all. And that's just not practical. Uh, we had Greg Clunas on the show. He was amazing. He talked about how to change behavior. He shared a deeply personal story that actually during the interview brought me to tears. It was incredible. And we've had a lot of other really great guests. I've got some guests coming up that are going to um, really help entrepreneurs go to that next level in very specific aspects. So it's not general information. Information. It's really specific. The this week's episode was incredible with Nancy Ganzenkoffer, who broke down the nine steps to profit, to profitability, and she calls it the profit puzzle. Puzzle, and that was amazing. So I've been having a great time. I've learned probably more just by being the host. Um, than I ever thought I would. And, um, you know, I, I conclude each one of those episodes with my own take on it, where we talk about how to make more money and then how to put family first. And so I think that we have a unique show. I think that the guests that are coming on are providing real value. And uh, it's been a wonderful experience 
that um, I'm really just so grateful that I that I just started. I, I started imperfectly. I had a lot of trouble with audio quality and things like that. Made a lot of mistakes in the beginning, but things have really come together and turned into what I think is going to really become a, a world class show. Yeah, uh, I I agree tenfold. It's a great show. I love the format of it. Um, do you do all the editing yourself? Right now, I do the actual audio engineering side of it myself. I'm working with some people to try to implement the systemization that I've created to start uh, the process of bringing people in and helping me because right now it's a weekly show. I've uh, got a spinoff show called Focus Your Greatness, which comes out July 2nd. That's a daily, just bite-sized little segments each day, five minutes or less for some great advice. Uh, It's a lot of work and I still have other business interests and I have other businesses I'm involved in on a daily basis. So my whole thing is you have to build a prototype that works. I feel that I'm getting very close to closing the loops on my prototype. And I feel that um, at that point, I'm going to be able to use that systemization that I've been using for for a decade now in small business to bring in uh, a team and help me do the, the post-production of it. So I'm really excited about that. It's been a lot of work figuring out everything and it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes some time. Yeah. Uh, that's the key. I, I had a, another guest on, Rick Hansen, who is a, a just an incredible neurologist and incredible psychologist. And um, you know, one of the things he he said is just keep going. No matter what you're doing, you might think it's not working right now, but if you just keep going persistently, you're gonna get better. As long as you mean well in the end, like you're gonna get better and you're gonna reach success. And uh, I totally just believe in keep going but i want to go into uh what i call scratching the surface curiosity questions which are just a few sort of deeper questions that i'll ask of you um and that's going to you know make someone feel less alone maybe also learn a little bit more about you and then we'll go into um some really quick rapid fire sort of questions uh that are just 30 seconds or less sort of answers so whenever you're ready we'll go into that let's do it awesome so um First question I'd love to ask is, uh, how much with what you have desired was truly like your own desire? And how much do you think that was your own desire instead of someone else's desire? Oh, this is a great question because I think so many of us take on other people's goals, other people's dreams for us. It starts with our family, but then by extension, we're easily influenced by uh, the media, by even a podcast like this. You could hear what I'm doing, get all fired up about it. I have made that mistake so many times. Uh, So many times I hear something, I think I could do that and it starts to lead me off off of my path. I really had to do some deep thinking. And my wife actually helped me. We did a lot of talking about this. And I came to the conclusion that for me, my drive behind entrepreneurship, I would love to say that it's something, you know, very, very um, socially impactful, uh, that I just want to help people, which of course I do. I do. But at the end of the day, I just want to be the boss. You know, I'll tell you a story. When I was a kid, I was two years old. I had a full out fight with my mom because I wanted to drive. And I stood there and on standing on the seat, holding onto the steering wheel of the car. And I pounded my chest and I said, me boss, when I was two years old, I don't remember this, but my mom tells the story all the time. I'm very driven to be the person who not only leads the company, but takes the responsibility. You know, I want to be that guy because there's lots of people who can't handle that. And I want to, I want to impact people's lives. I want to make their life better. I love, I'm driven to help people avoid the entrepreneurial nightmare and, and live the dream. But at the end of the day, I want to be the boss. And once I figured that out, it helped me to be a lot more clear about what I'm doing and the decisions I made. And it sounds maybe like like that's kind of like self-explanatory. Well, of course you want to be the boss. You want to be an entrepreneur. But I didn't have clarity around that. And once I got clarity around it, things started to happen. That is an awesome, awesome, awesome story. Thank you so much for uh, for diving into that because I know that a lot of people relate with that. Honestly, I, I myself, I hear something. It's so easy to get influenced by just so many amazing things. And you get, you're exactly right. You get fired up about it and then you go, hey, I think I could do that. And then you end up not doing the thing that you were talking about earlier, which is uh, following one course until succeeding. 
um, with that FOCUS acronym that you so beautifully outlined. Uh, uh, the next question I'd love to ask is, what's a, maybe a thought that you had about yourself recently that you're a little ashamed by having, or maybe you're a little embarrassed, but you know, it's just a thought and, and it's not completely you. That people aren't going to like me if I let them see the real me. Oh man, you're not alone in that. Um, a lot of people, uh, <laughs> I know I've thought that many times. Um, the next uh, question I'd like to dive deep is, uh, what is someone that right now is in your headspace that you think about a lot and you haven't really met them, but you do think about them a lot just because, well, heck, they make you just a way, 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 way better person. <laughs> oh, man. Um, there's not one. Tony Robbins, Gary V, Amy Porterfield. Um, there's a there's a wonderful woman who I've I've I interviewed on my podcast. Her name is Maggie Patterson, but I've never met her in person. She pushes me every day to be more real because the content that she puts out is so authentic and real that it really makes me stretch myself. And something that Gary Vee's really helping me with right now, and I'd love to talk to him about this one day. In fact, I will talk to him about this one day, is um, the just the need to, to get attention in the right way. And sometimes I've almost given in because I'm so frustrated at how slowly it's taking me to grow my audience to just do something sensational just just for the attention. But when then I hear Maggie's voice in my head and she's going, no, you got to be real. And I hear Gary talking about, you know, his whole thesis on how to be a good human being. And um, and it just holds me back and it says, no, I'm going to do this the right way. I'm going to get attention. I'm going to monetize that attention, but I'm going to do it in a way that is the right side of the line and to stay true to my personal beliefs and ethics. And that's really important. And, you know, I could. I got a list, man, as long as my arm. There's so many people. Wow. You know, I think um, that could be something that's written down as fulfillment to me. It just outlines fulfillment to me because it, there's, there's an immense amount of, um, you know, happiness that will come from that. But, you know, at the same time that that's going to be a swim towards the island, so to speak, you know, swim towards the island to be, uh, you know, there's a friction between being authentic but also um, – the sort of doing something that's so big, bigger than you may be that person in order to bring on that huge thing, you might have to change and be inauthentic to do it at first. So yeah, that is um, to me really cool that you, you outline that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Logan. And the thing is, man, is I, I just, I can't get my head around doing that inauthentic thing. Just like the end is not, or the means does not justify the end ever. So my my thing is it's not real unless you did it right and you did it the real way from the beginning. It's not real. And I've had a lot of things that are not real in my life that look good on the outside, but but behind closed doors, it wasn't authentic and real. And I'm done with that. So, man, if it takes me until I'm 80 or 90, <laughs> fine. That that's that's you know, and if some other kid can pull it off in six months and it takes me 40 years, I don't care because I'm doing it the right way. Hey, man, you could be the next Stan Lee. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, Stan Lee. Uh, yeah, I love that guy. Anyways, um, yeah, I want to go into last f- sort of like 30 seconds or less sort of quick questions. Um, if you could sit on a bench with uh, anyone for just an hour, who would it be and why? And I, I feel like we kind of have a, an idea of who that would be. Sit on a bench. Like in what context, Logan? sit on a bench, just have an hour with that person and just talk to them. Like in a park, just, just to have that one hour chat to get to get their wisdom kind of, kind of scenario. Yeah. No microphones, no nothing just between you and that other person. Do they have to be alive? (laughs) No, no, they don't. Okay. Um, I would I would like to to kind of go back in time 
and I'd like to sit down with Jim Rohn and I'd like to talk to him about everything that he knows because Jim Rohn has been referenced by some of the greats like Tony Robbins, like Brian Tracy, like uh, Les Brown. Jim Rohn has had an impact on some of the people who who kind of are the giants of today. So I would love to go back to there. And the other person that I would love to spend time with is Ray Kroc, who took McDonald's and made it what it is today. Wow. Dude, those are some uh, – I, I let you have two, but okay. We'll take it. We'll take Jim Rohn and, and Ray Kroc. Those are two awesome hit, heavy hitters in the world. Legends. Well, that would be – that would be like a flip of the coin, one or the other, if I had to choose between them. It'd be like, whatever, just flip a coin and I get to talk to one of them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, how do you like to consume content nowadays? Uh, blogs, podcasts, audiobooks, books, movies? Audio, man. Everything's audio. I am a f- like, voice is the next thing. It's going to socially change the world with all this voice activated technology. So for me, audio is, is king and, uh, that's where I'm putting all my attention. I'm very bullish on it. Uh, I think that that audio is something that we, it's, it's frictionless. It makes it so easy and I love it. That's awesome. Well, then I have to ask you, uh, what are some of your favorite podcasts that you're listening to right now? Uh, right now I have a couple of the Ted podcasts. I have HBR. Um, I listen to Amy Porterfield, Online Marketing Made Easy, Maggie Patterson, Small Business Boss, the Tony Robbins podcast, the Daniel Geffen show, um, and uh, the Gary V audio experience are, are my top as well as this podcast is right now on my subscription list. Nice. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> we do come from the same same sort of uh, field, my friend, because all those podcasts that you listed off are, are on my subscription list as well, as well as yours, man. Um, I'm loving it. Uh, so what's that pump-up song, though, since you're such a huge fan of audio? Do you have a pump-up song? I I have a few. Um, I... You know, I've got to remember, I was a teenager when the grunge scene in, uh, from Seattle was really big in the in the mid 90s. So one of the pump up songs I always listen to is something from Nirvana, uh, something from Soundgarden. And um, there was an old song just kind of before that era called Utah Saints. And man, I love that song, man. It just Google it and find it because it just it gets me going every time. Oh, man. And music, I think. Every single time I get like tired or just under energized, I'm like, ah, oh, I just need a song. And I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna add that to the Kiwi. So thank you so much for giving me a, another pump up song and making work that I would rather not do possible because of that. Um, so last two questions um, before I ask you the last and final question, I want to ask you where is one place where can people can find you? Just that one place, easy jamieirvine.ca because I'm Canadian, so it's a .ca. Awesome. Sweet. Um, I will plug that in the show notes. People can find that. And I talked about his uh, podcast earlier, so you can definitely check him out more there. And then uh, last final question, Jamie, is um, what's a um, what's a self-inquisitive question that maybe a listener right now can ask themselves throughout the day to when they're feeling stuck that they can start becoming unstuck because of the self-inquisitive question? Well, a, a question I ask myself all the time is if every, if the whole world could see what I'm doing right now, would I be happy with that? And I find that what that does for me is it gets me to reflect, like, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing something that's going to produce a result or would I, you know, or am I just doing something to keep busy, to look busy? And I find that that impacts a a center of my emotion that is very motivating because it's like, yeah, if everybody was looking right now, I want to be a leader. I want to set the tone. I want to, I want to set the bar high so that other people can be successful as well. So it just kind of pushes me to, to be a little more careful about what I'm doing and how I'm spending in my time and, and where I'm putting my resources. Man, that is, that is, uh, that is awesome. That is so cool. I hope that uh, everyone does ask themselves that question. So I think, uh, Jamie, this has been great hanging out with you and 
sharing this conversation with anybody else that's listening right now. And I want to say anybody that's taking the time to listen to this right now, I appreciate you so, so much. And um, please don't let this podcast just be another podcast where you hit next on the guest. If you heard something that resonated with you, just reach out. It does not take long to simply Instagram, Facebook, tweet about it. Because when you put it out in the ethos, I'll tell you what, often those beliefs that you have, you start actually practicing in your life and you adopt them. So please take action. And um, uh, Jamie, you and I will stay in touch, my man. And until then, I want to say thank you so much. Hey, thank you. It has been my pleasure and privilege. I hope that I shared some value and uh, really looking forward to having you on my show. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. We're going to do the interview. I think I think you're going to do an amazing job. I'm really looking forward to that. So thanks again. And thanks to the audience for taking the time to listen. It's so important that uh, we're able to share this information and we really appreciate you. And uh, make sure you pound that subscribe button and rate and review this podcast because it's awesome. Ah, oh, Jamie, I, I'll send you the check of uh, plugging that in for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for what, a penny? <laughs> no, 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 dude, uh, it's worth much more than a penny. Um, thank yeah, you. Yeah. You can't put money on this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Like when you really believe in something, that that's where it has intrinsic value. And and uh, I joke about the penny, but yeah, it, money's not. It, you know, we all have to make money, but what's important here is that we're we're really supporting one another in the business community, in the wider world. And I think that's the kind of stuff that's going to make a difference in life going forward. Gosh, man, more more value is just being brought. So thank you so much. Of course, you you did a great job. Uh, we could go on for, I know, 14 more hours, but fortunately, I'm going to let the listeners um, uh, hear y- your podcast now and also uh, maybe uh, check me out when I come on to your show as well. And, um, you know, well, heck, let's get back to our lives and start actually creating something and scratching our own itch. So thank you again, Jamie. I will talk to you later, man. Thanks. All right, there's another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to support the show by listening. Um, the biggest compliment you could ever pay me is just by sharing this because honestly, it doesn't take much and it feels so good when people create something and take time. And when I see someone take time to create something that really just changed my day, either made me feel less alone, maybe put a smile on my face, made me laugh, made me feel wiser. I always want to share it with the world because why? When I share something that resonates with me, why not share it? I mean, that's just kind of the thing that goes around and it's free. It takes no time at all other than just a click of the button, share on either Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any of those social media platforms would be great to share this. So I really appreciate it. And I want to say that, um, Anybody who's looking to gain authority or expertise in their area and they don't want to take another year or year and a half to write a book and wait until that's published, I think the best way is right now is to start a podcast. So if you're at all interested in starting a podcast, if you meet the certain requirements, I would love to help you with a podcast and also get a website going for you as well. And this is not an easy task. It's hard to actually get it done and get it out there so every now and then we need some help and i'm here for you so please reach me at logan at logantylernelson.com if you're interested at all and don't ever forget you matter and you're enough